to Super Tuesday recap. It is Chris and Deepom here, and we are back with our now double header Super Tuesday recap for Arrow and Legend of Tomorrow. Um, before we get further, do we have any new reviews? I don't think we do. I pulled it up right now, actually. I do not think we do. Uh, I am deeming this though. While he's doing that, I am deeming this GS a week because that's pretty much what this has fucking been <laughs> with Arrow, Legend of Tomorrow. And uh, we're doing uh, the character corner on the GSA, so we're going to go right into that. So if you, if we, some of the stuff we talk about in these two episodes kind of confuse you, make sure you go over to the character corner and listen to the Justice Society of America character corner we're going to do right after this, because um, that might clean some of the stuff up. So, um, yeah, uh, no, there's no new reviews. All right, no new reviews, so let's get right into Arrow then. Uh, season 5, Episode 3, A Matter of Trust. The Green Arrow is forced to face a new drug dealer when Wild Dog goes off on his own. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip right to to what I kind of was saying. Yo, they 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 put Curtis in the jacket, yo. They put him in the mask. They put him in the jacket and the mask, yo. I yo, I freaked out. I was like, oh, cool. Our first hint at Mr. Terrific. The jacket. Oh no, he's wearing the mask. And they even dropped Terry. They even they even dropped the name. They dropped Terry Sloan, yo. I they, that was a lot of fan service. They they name dropped. I was like, wait a minute. Yo, you guys really know what the next what, what Legend of Tomorrow's doing next uh, next episode, huh? You really you're just gonna drop all that stuff right in there, like I, I and no one did they do that. Apparently, he is an Olympian, which I never know before. I didn't know yeah, he that. Mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that Curtis had mentioned that before. Uh, he's <laughs> I love the fact that he also kind of squared that with the fact that he can't fight worth worth the damn, and he's <laughs> like it's like well, there are other ways of being an Olympian. <laughs> like, okay, Curtis, okay. Um, I didn't even get the, the T-Spheres to, to go, and, um, and we've already kind of seen them in last season, so um, need them hook those up. We're, we're good to go. His jacket says fair play, man. Dude. 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 <laughs> oh, man. Like, I I actually I saw a picture of him in the jacket in the mask. Like, so I had never – so I had no well, – I, I hadn't seen these set photos. Well, I had so, no idea this was happening. Well, so I, I knew – like, it was like a set photo and it had a berry in it. And it had, but, so I'm like, oh, this must be like a crossover episode in the future sometime. All right, whatever. I was not expecting it this – I was not expecting it this soon. I was not expecting him to put on the jacket. I was not expecting it. So he put the jacket on. I was like, all right. Okay, they put the jacket on. They'll come in with the mask later on. And then he has a mask on. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. You. You, you beautiful bastards. Like, I. So good, man. I'm in shock. Over the mask. Him in the mask blew me away. Like, <laughs> I wish I could put it into words. <laughs> they did it, man. Because I was like, oh, they probably won't let Curtis in the field because he's not battle ready, and they'll find his own way. To... Like I had mentally done his arc in my head, mm -hmm. and it ended about three fourths away through the season. Mm -hmm. I had mentally done the way that they do Arrow. I was like, okay, I'll be seeing Mister Terrific, and, and rap. but no. What isn't that something that we we've enjoyed? I mean, and I, I think that's something that, that that stands out in this episode, um, and it's something that we we've been talking about before. And I think they did it a little bit last season, but because they were doing the. Legend of Tomorrow crossover, it kind of uh, went under the radar a little bit. And something we've said about all the shows, even Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., these shows are best when, like you said, when they move 100 miles an hour and when they don't drag out storylines that we know. We kind of know what's going to happen. Like, So we had, the, hey, you, they know we want to see Curtis in that jacket and that mask. All right, cool. He's going on the field. We're going to do that. Um, something I brought out last week. They did not drag out the Felicity um, Roy thing. They, they had her by the end of the episode telling them what's going on. Now, there could be something that goes on after that. But of course. The, I, I kind of feel like that might we might get a resolution by that by next episode. Because, you know, they they went and dealt with that instead of dragging it out and holding in. And I love that that it was Curtis goes to Felicity. He's like, come on. You know you can't keep this a secret. He's going to find out, and it's going to go horrible. You know how keeping secrets from people on your team are. I mean, you just talked – the whole episode is dealing with trust and and, 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 and and trusting each other. Come on, you can't do this. He's going to find out. you got to tell him, you know? And by the end of the episode, she does it. Right. Um, you know, you, you have uh, Thea, you know, and, and, and the whole thing with um, Quentin as uh, making Quentin the, uh, the director, uh, the deputy mayor and, and not telling Oliver. And by the end of the episode, hey, we squash that too. It's like, I, I think that works at its best, and it's why th why this episode, th this season, is starting to feel 
Like it, it really is taking a lot of themes from season one and two, but it's mm-hmm. doing them differently and better in a way, you know? And um, yeah, no, I, I just, I love that. I love that they're doing that. I love that they're not wasting time on things that, yeah, we've, we've gone down this road before, but we're going to do it differently by not dragging it out. And I think it's, I think it's working. I think it's working wonderful. It catches you almost off guard. Because mm-hmm. I mentally, I was like, oh, the jacket. That's the first piece of what will eventually be Curtis. Oh, no, he's wearing the mask. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I wasn't even really done thinking about, like, how cool it was just the jacket mm-hmm. and how Terry Sloan's name be said on television. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, he's in the mask and, and he's, he's defusing bombs. Like, wait a second. Wait a second. This. So now, I, I don't know. It's, it was, like you said, a really welcome change. Yep. Yep. So I, um, you know, I, I, I just think that's great. It's also a great scene, uh, Oliver pulling a, a Bruce Wayne a little bit and trying to train these these folks, <laughs> and seeing that, hey, listen, man, you gotta you gotta trust them as much as they trust you, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, Ramirez what was you know was wrong, but he was also right in the fact that Oliver should have listened to him, and um, followed him to where the drugs were. Yeah, you know what really did catch me off guard was uh. I didn't recognize Bagman at first. So they're all standing on the cave like, who the hell is this kid? <laughs> yeah, because well, we never really, we never saw him without the, the rags. Yeah, and I was never like, I was like, did I miss? I was like, I started rewinding. I was like, I must have missed something. Like, was I not paying attention? Well, I didn't know he couldn't take them off. He could take them off. <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of Ragman underexplained. Right. I was like, wait. It is kind of dumb, which I, I enjoy. I'm glad there was no like clunky exposition conversation. Mm-hmm. It did make me feel a little disoriented the first scene in the Arrow Cave. Well, and I and I love the fact that uh, everybody like you could tell that he's out of place too because he sees things going. And he's like, "Wait, what?" Like when they when they go, "Well, at least he's not punching us in the face anymore." Wait, wait, he punches you guys because remember his recruitment was so much different than everybody else's. He was Way at- different. I was like, <laughs> "Okay, that's how I know who he is." He, he never at- laid hands on me. <laughs> wait, he beats you guys. He didn't do any of the training. I'm like, why? Who is this guy just hanging out? Right. And I was like, oh, wait, he's magic. That's right, right, he's right. 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 I guess you wouldn't make the magic guy train. That's probably yeah, true. Right. You know. There's really no point. Wait, so how'd you get here? Oh, I got I got an arrow to the knee. Uh, you know, they chased me down. I, I, I got kicked in the chest. Oh, I, I kind of just, you know. He, he asked me politely. Yeah, he asked me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, yeah, and I love and I love that he sees how dysfunctional everything is. Just like, wait, is this normal? Like, this shouldn't be normal, right, guys? Is this how- no? It's normal. This is how it goes. Wait, what? <laughs> uh so good, so good. And I mean, you even get them because you know before they weren't training in in the Arrow Cave; they were training somewhere else. So by the end of this episode, right. you get they, you get them actually being let into where the Arrow Cave was. And I love that. Was it? Evelyn or somebody says we're going down. It's like, does anybody else know you're down here? Like, like makes a does joke. The person who built this elevator know that you're down here. Right. And I was like, that's an excellent question, Evelyn. Right. Thank you. <laughs> you be the voice of the fans. Wait, wait, wait. Who built this elevator? Right. Don't they know about this place? Right. Did you kill them? Like, right. what's going on here? Oh man, and just get to see them all standing in front front of the the former team. You right. Know, the, the, and I, I just like. This is good. I I feel I still feel like it's gonna end horribly and all of them are not gonna make it out the season. Oh, it's gonna season. go really, really poorly. <laughs> but but Yeah. But but until it goes poorly, it's gonna go well. Yeah, no. Um and to seeing them all work together um is great. And And it's good for the show for them to go from the beginning of last episode to him not wanting the team at all and now they're literally in the field with him. Yep. Like that was it's, that was a good moment to finally yeah. see them out there and you know, Oliver's like he can take care of Samson while they're over there diffusing, um, uh, well, taking out the uh, the chemicals. There, he said, I trusted my team. Mm-hmm. And which is awesome. And think about how long it took Oliver to be able to do that. Exactly. You know, like a minute, a matter of fact, to be fair, it, it Oliver really didn't get to that point until like maybe season four. And even then, the only reason why he really like let's be clear about what happened there. The only reason why he really trusted the team at that point is because they had been operating without him. Yeah, and then when he came back, they were like, 
you don't get to tell us what to do anymore. Right. <laughs> so like, that's the reason he stopped telling them what to do is because they were like, no more of that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is different, and uh, I, I like seeing it. Like, I, I, I yeah, I, I want more, and um, it's a welcome change. Definitely a welcome change. And uh, and I like the fact that uh, Oliver stood beside, and I think we kind of saw this coming, stood beside um, Quentin being uh, deputy mayor. Yeah, I think there's the way it was sprung on him kind of caught him off guard, but I think that once he thought about it long enough, it was easy for him to accept and move on from and to really kind of embrace. I'm glad that he did. Mm-hmm. Yep, because uh, I'll take more Paul Black one. Paul, Paul yeah, Black they, they've proven like there's only so many people in this entire – little universe they've created that you can trust. And Mm -hmm. I think it was good for Ollie to recognize that and say, you know what? Even if I don't trust you, trust you, I kind of have to. Well, and that's the thing. You're already already in the circle. Well, and and that's the thing about, you know, uh, this episode is all about trust, trusting the people around you. You have, there's only about a certain number of people you're going to, and like Oliver's never going to be that person to trust everybody, but there's going to be a certain number of people you trust. So, Go there, do that, and deal right. with it. You know, um, I'm gonna be really interested in seeing what happens with uh Billy, you know, Felicity's uh now boyfriend slash the uh maybe good cop. Oh, you mean Prometheus? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's got to be. It's kind of telegraphed, right? Yeah, it's got to be him, right? It it's like I it it has to be. Feels like Prometheus. Yeah, I, I just do. Yeah. I uh, so, yeah. Um. Um. Mm-hmm. You're you're calling it. You're... I hope we're wrong. I hope we're wrong. But I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah. No. no, no I, don't, I don't trust the new boyfriend. I don't trust any boyfriends of Thea or um. Especially acquired or, or, off screen. Or, 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 or look, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, I still, I'm still, I still feel bad that old boy Thea's old, old, old boyfriend last time actually wasn't a bad guy and ended up dying. You know. I was like, "Oh, damn it!" He, he was, was a bad guy. He was, uh, he was hive. N- n- he no, but it wasn't on. His, he got, he got. Um, uh, the uh, um, wh- what's your name? Gave him the pills. I don't think he was trying. Oh, to you're be. right. He was. He. I mean, he ended up doing, but it wasn't. But his, they voluntarily took the pills. Well, he because he was told it was. He was told it was like it was like energy pills or something like that. He didn't. I don't think he did it knowing that he was joining a a, a criminal enterprise or anything like that. I don't Fair think enough. so. All right. So yeah, I kind of felt bad. This boy told him because he was like, "It's like, oh no, I, I take the pills that uh, what's your name tells me to take, you know, because that's what I need to do." Like, so and I'm like, "Oh, you beautiful bastard, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna die." And he died, and yeah, it just sucks. So, um, all right, let's talk about John Diggle, man. So they 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 really did trick me because I was like, well, maybe Flashpoint changes so that Floyd's alive. That's a wrinkle. Nah. And then, That'd be a nice wrinkle. And then, because you know, because at the beginning of the episode, they had they they did the little um whenever they do the recap and they had you know Barry there telling Felicity about Flashpoint things to change and it showed you know John Junior now instead of Sarah baby Sarah I was like well what else has changed and then they brought up Floyd I was like well maybe Floyd didn't die hmm that, right that, that they, could they, work. they do make you think that and it and it works out pretty good I mean it worked, what line did he say. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Cause he says something to him. Cause he's talking about uh, he's talking about uh, uh, Diggle's brother. He's like, all that hate you poured into hating me, and you should have poured it into yourself. And I was like, damn man, that's, whew, Floyd's got a point <laughs> there. And then he's talking to Lila, and then he turns around, and Floyd ain't there. And I'm like, yo, they got me, <laughs> they got me. That was that that was some good that was. That was some good shit. That was really good. I didn't see it coming. And, um, yeah, they shot me t- twice. Once when Floyd showed up, and then when they took him away again, I was like, you you guys are good. You guys are you guys were really <laughs> good. You guys did a good job with that one. And um, it makes sense that Diggle is feeling that guilt. And especially when you go back to – now the, the, the him seeing Floyd in his mind, what Floyd said to him about pouring that guilt into himself, and then him kind of giving up in that in that cell, it all makes sense. A hundred percent. And it was a really well done story and it was mm-hmm. 
didn't require too many leaps of logic. It all kind of makes sense what we know about Diggle's character. And it's going to be really interesting to see what they do next because, look, man, I can't break into a prison for you to be like, no, I'm not leaving. Right. (laughs) So if they come, like, he has to go. Well, you do see in the trailer that somehow he gets out because he is helping Oliver train them. So you know he gets out some kind of way, but it's like, this is the breakout. Do they do they clear his name? And if they break him out, does that mean Diggle's now going to be a fugitive? You know? He'll have to get a better mask. A way better mask. <laughs> and maybe that's where this is all... This is a long way to a better mask Diggle. A better mask Diggle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll accept that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I definitely will. Um, let's see. I, uh, the fight scenes were great. Loved uh, the Oliver fight with um, Samson. Like they they've just, they've upped their game this season. It, well, let's talk about Samson, aka Cody Rhodes. That was a pretty good job for a pro wrestler. Oh, you're right. I forgot about yeah. See, <laughs> you're like, oh wow, that was that's Dusty Rhodes' kid. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. This was the episode. Like it was, it was interesting to see because because. So for those who don't know, Cody Rhodes recently quit WWE. He's now wrestling independence. But when he was there, they did a thing where Stephen Amell did a match versus Cody Rhodes. And they've kind of built this friendship and they've done a lot of charity work together. Um, online charity work, raising money for for uh, uh, sick kids and stuff like that. And it's been very positive. And he's, I've read some interviews. He went through all apparently the proper channels. He didn't go to his friend and say, hey, put me on the show. Like he read for scenes and this is not the party audition for, but it's the party got. And uh, I thought he did pretty well. Mm-hmm. No, no, they did great. Did 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 great. And um, again, I love their fight scenes. I love I love Oliver finally taking them out by, by like, yo, you might not be able to feel pain, but you still need those tendons, yo. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And then he couldn't move. I was like, oh, that boy good, yo. <laughs> Oliver, <laughs> Oliver, Oliver Queen, good, yo. <laughs> that boy good, yo. You know what you're doing, yo. You gotta. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on, keep it keep an eye on that young man, yo. He might, he yeah, might go play. He's got a future. He's got a future, yo. <laughs> uh and uh and again, I know what people said it last few seasons about the flashbacks, but I'm loving the Broadfoot flashbacks, man. Yo, Broadfoot flashbacks are exactly what I hoped all the flashbacks would have been. Mm-hmm. Some gangster shit. I was like, okay, <laughs> Broadfoot, like, damn. Yo, when he he's like, Oh, I see, we had a misunderstanding. You you thought those were good guys that you, those were innocent no, men. No, because even one thing you'd be told them they're bad guys, like I'm gonna show you some shit. Right. <laughs> it's like come with me. Come with Where me. Where we going? No, just come with me. Where are we going? Stop asking me questions. Mm-hmm. Just get in the car. And he's like, he's like, but what would have happened if I didn't ring the bell? It's like, oh well, we would have figured something else out. Yeah. Justice like, would have been done. Look right. <laughs> Justice would have been done. And, and like again, it goes back to trust, right? Trust the system. Trust that your brothers will be there for you. Trust that things will go the way they're supposed to go, you know. Which is which, which which leads me to believe it's like. So how does the Russia stuff go wrong, so that Oliver doesn't learn that lesson? Oh, it can still go right, and he can still learn the lesson on its face. But true. It's, how many times have you had to relearn some shit? True. Valid. Valid there. Valid there. And especially Ollie, let's just say he doesn't have the most. Um, Aggressive learning curve. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh man. Some would say he's slow. Not me. I'm just saying. Some would say. Yeah. No. That's 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 true. That's true. You gotta. Yeah. Hard headed. Hard headed. Hard headed. Hard headed. That's, a, that's a fair statement. Does not listen. <laughs> I love. I love. I love when he first fights Samson. And Samson really does kick his ass. And plus he's like, do not say that when he comes in. If he's going to talk about that, he's going to be walking in. When you say that, do not say that. He's going to be in a grumpy mood. <laughs> like, yeah, don't, tell, don't mention him getting his ass whipped. Right. We, know he, we all know he got his ass whipped. Right. You There's not, no point in saying it out loud. Do not say it. It helps no one. And I love that when he comes in, he's trying hard not to limp. <laughs> but oh, he yeah. is limping. <laughs> you got to look, look tough for your team, man. We're having coach nothing happened. got to look tough for your team. Oh man, no! Like I said, that looks up for the team. I, I just, I'm gonna say, I, I've been loving this season so far, Arrow man. This has been great. This has been fun. It's been great. 
Uh, don't really know exactly where the story is going, but I love the story that's being told. Right. And it's it's an Arrow <clears throat> Oliver story, and it's not. It doesn't feel like other. Like I said, last season was all about trying to rush towards Listen to Tomorrow, and they're doing their own thing, and it's and it's it, it's fun. It's great. I enjoy it. And um, there's a lot of kick-ass scenes in there, so, yeah. And it's different in the fact that Oliver's, this is the second episode in a row, Oliver's kind of apologized. Right. I didn't know he could do that. <laughs> I so. didn't know he could, uh, he could grow. Yeah, so. All right, um, so we're ready to go into, you got anything else you want to say about Arrow? I'm checking one thing here. I think that was it. Um, I liked that, um... Stephen Amell was uh, in the awful. I didn't actually see the new Ninja Turtles movie. He played Casey Jones, mm -hmm. and he told Wild Dog he liked the mask. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, all right, buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, I really liked. Uh, yeah, I liked the whole thing. It was. It felt like a little full for this episode. Mm -hmm. Like it just felt like there was just a lot, a lot, and and I guess it's been kind of people's complaints that nothing happens on Arrow. This one felt like everything happened on Arrow. Because now we've got. A drug that's a derivative of vertigo and all these crime bosses, and we've got trust issues, and we've got Felicity telling um Ragman about Ragman's past, and you've got um Oliver being Iron Detective Lance, right. and then you've got Diggle, and <laughs> right. then the flashbacks. Yeah. That's a lot for forty two minutes. Yeah. And I know I think maybe they're setting up to where they can later spend single episodes on each one of these threads. Mm-hmm. But it, it just, I mean, just as you look, as I go through my notes, I was like, that's a lot. Yeah, no, that's a lot going on there, yeah. There's a lot going on in this episode. Um, all right, so I'm about to go into Legend of Tomorrow. Just want to point out. So <laughs> we've gotten, we got name dropped to Terry Sloan. We got Mr. Terrific and Curtis Holt. Um, you have, we had Ted Grant, which who knows if he comes back. Right. Um, we've had Hawkman and Hawk Girl. Uh, on the Flash, we've had Jay Garrick. Who else am I missing? Am I missing anybody else we've had so far? I don't think obviously so. Black Canary. Oh, Black Canary. Yes, yes, obviously. Um, so you they've been they've been throwing these 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 Justice Society of America members out there at us. And they're like, all right, fuck it. Let's just go ahead and do it. So we get Legend of Tomorrow, Season 2, Episode 2. And the title episode is The Justice Society of America. The legends, the legends discover a time apparition that threatens the Justice Society of America who are on a mission to intercept and seize a mysterious, uh, mysterious package in Nazi-occupied Paris. Dude. I love this show now, by the way. <laughs> I want that on the record. <laughs> it's official. It's, it's taking me two episodes to be like, oh, no, they just accepted, like, that there's an inherent, like, canviness and weirdness to being a time travel show and just saying, we're going full hogged and, and we're going to be doing Nazi salutes on television, which Marvel wouldn't do in a movie. Right. Right. And then, and then have Ray basically blow everyone's cover by not doing the salute. He just didn't want to do it. He just didn't want to do it. I'm like... Cannot fault you for that. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Like, just dying. Look, man, I know you're next to Jax. He wouldn't have understood, man. Right. You just yelled at him to not break cover by not hitting a racist. Can't you just pretend to be racist so we ain't got to break cover mm -hmm. and threaten history, right. you asshole? Right, right. This after Stein. I never thought I'd be asking for a character to give a Nazi salute. And this after like Stein. The show's done. Yeah, and this after Stein, you know. Like impress everyone by actually being able to sing, you know. It's just like, come on, yo. Like he impressed everyone on the show. He finally gave the rest of us what we wanted to see: Vincent Garber singing. Right. <laughs> like that was. Awesome. You wonder why I'm pro musical episode. That's why Vincent Garber's in your cast, and you're not letting him sing. <sighs> so anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to the beginning of the episode. I'm not touching this. We get the legends getting their ass kicked by the Justice Society of America. No, they whipped their ass. I was so happy they won. I and, was so it wasn't even close. And it wasn't even close. But then they, the way they did it, I mean, they had upset. So the, the 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 Justice the GSA and we have right now in 1942 
is Our Man, Commander Steel, Obsidian, Star Girl, Vixen, and Doctor Midnight, and um, they actually had them like like Obsidian actually brought darkness, yo. Like this is amazing. They fought like a team. <laughs> Well, they actually are. Ryan Singer never seen this episode. No, no, never, never, nope, nope. This is this is more this is more teamwork than the, any of the X Men movies put together. Like it's, uh, we just can't we we can't we can't talk about that. I I just can't believe they did it. You know, even the way they did like Doctor Midnight as Vision and stuff like that. This see- episode had the JSA. It had super powered Nazis. It had people, all the Nazis getting punched in the face. Mm-hmm. It had time travel. It had paradoxes. <laughs> it had Ray offhandedly joking about one of the moments we didn't mention last episode, which is getting chased by a T Rex. Yes. <laughs> like, I love this show. I'm sorry. It got Sarah Lance finally acknowledged as captain. Oh, dude, that was the best part. When, like, I love the, the subtle 1942 sexism. When they came in and she started talking, she's like, "Well, I'm talking to the leader." And they pointed to <laughs> they pointed to Martin Stein, and and Jax immediately knew what it was. He was like, "No, they pointed you to the leader because you're the old white guy in 1942." It's that schism. It's that schism. It's that schism. All right, you don't you don't need to be there. You don't need to. You don't, you're not the captain. But all right, we're gonna. I'm gonna let you figure this out the hard way. And that's basically what happened. He figures no. out. <laughs> The hard way. Jax is his conscious the entire time. Mm-hmm. He just appears out of nowhere. You know we share a psychic link, right? Right. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Don't worry about where I came from. I'm just letting you know that I know this is going to go badly. Right. And then he disappears back in the shadow. Right. And Jax just appeared to drop, drop bars and then vanish. Right. Like at one point, he's on the bridge with Martin and they're watching the fight. I'm like, wait, why is Jax not in the fight? Right, right. right. Like we all know Jax can throw hands. Like what the fuck's going on here? No, well, he had to be there to actually tell Martin these things. Well, that, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm, here's the other reason why I'm so glad that Sarah's back in charge now. It's like, because now you get rid of the, like, I'm, I'm looking at this like, wait, why is, why is Firestorm not out in the field in the first place? Like, you, right. Come, I, I, listen, this is getting the ridiculous. Of guns. This is getting ridiculous. Last, last season, he literally transmuted, like, the, that meteor to water. I think you might want your powerful weapon out there. Just, and why aren't we focusing more on that, by the way? He turned the meteor to water. <laughs> no one's had any further questions. You're like, maybe we should cultivate this new power you discovered. Nope, you've all just moved on with it, and he's throwing fireballs again? Fine, I guess. So That's how my ship would run. I, I'm saying there's so much more you can do with this, guys. Oh, uh, man. But, no, I, I loved it. I, I love that you get I, – I love the fact that the JSA is basically called the Legends out on some – you guys aren't heroes. And I, oh man, the shade that gets thrown in this episode at them sometimes. Like what she, what Vixen tells Ray, she's like, oh, you're not a hero. <laughs> it makes you feel any better you're not a hero. Right. What? Right. He said, I feel like I'm a bad hero. Don't worry, you're not a bad hero. You're not even a hero. Right. See you later. Like, what? Good God. Like. And I like how Ray didn't get immediately defensive and like all super, like even for Ray faux masculine, he was just like, some cold shit, man. Right, it's like oh, you had to say that. You got a, you got a fucking point. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, he didn't call it wrong. He was just like you didn't have to say it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. Oh, that was. It's just <sighs> they gave us a GSA. They gave us look. They gave me Nazi thon. Oh. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I didn't know I wanted. Now I know. So I've been made aware. So here's the thing: Do you th- is Thon the big bad here, or is he working for somebody else? I, mean, I you know think he's working a with a lot other of people. pieces in the area. Because <clears throat> so here's the thing: I was thinking too. I, I'm I'm looking at it is is this Thon going back through time, doing all this stuff, and does he eventually end up going back to the night that Barry's mom? To kill Barry's mom. Well, like, think about this way. Like how- so when we, fr- so I just started rewatching parts of season two of The Flash. Mm-hmm. When we see the Reverse Flash's origin story in that episode, now I know what time period you're from, Flash. That's the first time he finds Barry in the time stream. Mm. 
Barry may have found him they've interacted before, but that's the first time he finds Barry. That's not the first time he'd been in the time stream because when they lock him up and they start to lose Cisco, he says, your children playing with something you don't understand. Presumably at this point, he understands time travel. Right. This is how he learns. Mm -hmm. He time traveled before it became the Flash of Nemesis, and this is when. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, this, this is why Thawne is so interesting to me. Because we've seen other speedsters go through time, and we see what they they do, and ha when they fuck up the timeline, what happens to them? Thon's out here doing it, and has no care in the world, uh, and it's not a, it's, it doesn't seem to be having any repercussions. There's no there's no time race. There's no like he seems to be a master of, of what he's doing. Like when he goes back at the end of the episode, he goes back and he kills Rex Tyler. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> You can't. How did you? But apparently he can do it. Apparently he's right. done it before. Right. How did he do it before? Because he says that Rex Tyler wasn't. Well, didn't he didn't vanish? He was being erased from the time stream. Mm -hmm. Because the reverse Flash was changing the past. I think this is our. He, which by the way, it makes so much more sense than I ever could have given him credit for. He's the big bad of the season. He could be. Yeah. So I'm, he's I'm... a master time travel. <laughs> yep. He he is the master time. This show, time. man. You know? Right. <laughs> man. As, we'll, as you'll hear on our JSA character corner, he's our Perdetagon. Yes. Yes. Um Ah, uh, yeah, I just I I love I, and I love how unimpressed the GSA was. We go back to that. We were just unimpressed, you know, with everything. <laughs> Oh, oh! You think your you think your technology and your ship is going to impress us? It doesn't. <laughs> Matter of fact, it, it makes, makes you scarier, right? <laughs> oh man! And I love that the I, I, you, in, again we'll hear this more in a character corner. I love that the legends are kind of more impressed and kind of enthralled by how well they work as a team and that they're actually heroes. And that kind of hits them. It's like, yo, we're not heroes. We're not. We're not that. <laughs> Yeah, we can't do what they do. They they work as a well ordered um, machine. I love they took votes. You know, Rex Tyler is the chairman. <laughs> you know, they it's it's a they 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 work with the government. It goes back to the origins of the GSA and actually, you know, being a force that fights Nazis. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was it was awesome. Also, when the characters who knew about the GSA were appropriately awestruck. Mm hmm. Yes. They're like, whoa, this isn't this. No, no, everybody calm down. This is the greatest team of all time. Like, it's the reverence, again, that we'll talk to in the character corner, but that other heroes who we may view as contemporaries, contemporaries because of comic books, but the way they see each other generationally, this is the this is the gold standard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, Nate Haywood. Love the arc. <laughs> Great arc. Yeah. Yeah. I here's the thing. At one point I thought Ray was gonna inject himself and I was like, hey, we're gonna get him actually have being Adam, you know? Actually yeah. have the Adam powers. And then when I realized he didn't inject himself and then he gave it to Haywood, I was like, Oh, this is gonna make sense. I know where they're going with this and um I'll allow it. <laughs> Very will, much so. I will allow it. And but it also ties into the JSA theme of, as we'll talk about, I hate just that this is like a promo over the character corner, what it is. No, I don't hate that. I love that. <laughs> Synergy. Um, it's a generational story. Mm -hmm. He's truly his grandfather's grandson. Yep. And it's it was really, to adapt it to an hour and have the whole thing make sense was really well done by the people on the show. Right. And remember, we we I remember when people said that we were getting Vixen in on uh, a new Vixen in this season of Legend of Tomorrow. And people were like, "Wait, why are we? We already had one." And I'm like, "It makes sense now. It's 1942. It's a generational power it's a gen again. Generational thing. So it makes sense. it was weird for me for to have the JSA and all the, like the CW leather suits, uh, except yeah. for Star Girl, <laughs> whose suit. By the way, that's the first. This is the first week I've ever thought like. I mean, they should have just gone super traditional with Walt, with Ollie, with a Barry suit. Because, for my head, I was like, that kind of thing would never work on television. Stargirl's suit worked great. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, they really, they really could have done traditional with, with um, Barry's. 
Yeah, I'm like, oh, the CW leather joint did not have to happen. Like, I in my head, I'm just I'm like, that's the reality. This just kind of works. No, Stargirl looked amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she did. It, and here's the thing. You know what was great about it? Her, um, I'm looking at the the, the, the the costume now. Is it's so it's, it's, it's a traditional suit, but it doesn't look overly sexualized. Even though it's yeah. it's, it's a tight fitting suit, it's like, oh, I can I can do this. She didn't have the cosmic staff, yo. I just no, they gave her the cosmic staff. <laughs> the whole thing is so delightfully nerdy and wonderful, and I can't wait for people on this team to get stranded in our timeline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you think Stargirl's not going to be a fixture at Star Labs next year, you're out of your star line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, I, I, you know what? I, I think that CW's realizing, because, I mean, they've been dropping these GSA characters all over all of their shows. And I think they realize it's like, yo, we can use these. We'll never have to worry about DC coming in and doing what they did with some of the other, like, the, the movie stuff and taking away, like, the Suicide Squad and things like that. We can do that with the GSA because they're never going to do that. They're never going to do a GSA live action movie. And I don't want them to at this point, to be perfectly honest. I'm fine with them keep doing, keeping the GSA characters on TV because they're, it's great. I loved it. Like, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So, um, so right now we've seen Thawne try to help, uh, um, Damien Dark. Damien blow, Dark. Blow, blow in 42. Up. We know that they both exist in this time period. Together. Right. Uh, blow up New York City with a by giving the Nazis a, a nuclear bomb. Then he tries to wipe out the GSA by giving Nazis the ability to make super soldiers. I loved Ray saying that the name was the one that knows. That was... Um... Mm-hmm. Ray's going to get killed by someone for talking too much. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really, at this point, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't surprise me if there was somebody else higher up, you know, moving um, Thawne's hand, but I also can see it being Thawne. Yeah. You know, just being evil. And again, at some point, you got to get Jay Garrett versus Thawne. You need a speedster. Like you don't know there's a speedster after you right now, which so I can respect your your lack of urgency. <laughs> but team, I'm gonna need you to get a speedster. Mm-hmm. It's gonna become urgent because uh, as someone who's rewatching season two of The Flash, it gets really tough to handle speedsters if you don't have one. Like really tough. Like just tact from a tactical perspective. You think? I'm just saying. Like he literally ran into the GSA uh, <laughs> building and killed Rex Tyler. By shoving, vibrating his hand through his chest. Like, it's, you need a speedster. Bro. He got in the brownstone, killed Rex Tyler, talked shit, and then left, and no one saw him. Right. <laughs> That's fast. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're going to need somebody. And uh, Jay Garrick's not really doing much. Just keep an eye on the time stream. But other than that, I mean, saying what's up. They Earth three seemed to survive without him for as long as he was captured from Zoom. Right. Clearly, you know, maybe there's other heroes there can handle that shit. Maybe there's a Superman and or Supergirl and or Martian Manhunter. By the way, I'm halfway through the first episode of the season. Oh my god, I love the show. Um, <laughs> so I throw that out there too. Uh, yeah, man. I yeah, you're right. Jay seems to have a whole lot of time on his hands, and he's got to meet Thawne sometime because that that helmet has to scare Thawne at the end of season one. Right. Not only does he meet Thawne. So he's got to beat the fuck out of Thorne. He got to beat the shit out of Thorne because Thorne is not happy about he's seeing that helmet. Like, That's my cue. <laughs> right. No, I, I want no part of that shit. I don't want old man. Like, it's one thing to beat up on a young Barry. It's another thing to beat up on old man strength. Uh, Jay Garrick. Nah. <laughs> Jay Garrick's not here for it, man. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 He's too, nope. he's literally too over the shit. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Don't want them. Don't want them old man hands, yo. So. And he's, th- and he's throwing them. Yeah. <laughs> Fast. Fast. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. And um, here's another thing, too. I, it hit me because when I was, again, doing the GSA, reading some of the issues we did, we also got to get the the, the Legion. Because didn't we see that? Didn't we see the rings last season? The ring was on the time ship, yes. Yeah. So. I haven't said the L word because I don't want to sound greedy. <laughs> 
but there's a, a young man who comes from the Legion's timeline whose cousin's a member of the Legion who would be awesome to see. Because what if we think we're getting Jay and we get Impulse wearing the helmet? Oh, dude. This was a uh, family... Where do you get that helmet? Family friend. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be some some speedster. So yeah, he's got to hate that helmet for some reason. But uh, yeah, like you said, you say Legion, and we talk Flash. I think I think Impulse. I think Bart. I mean, it's, yeah, makes sense. Because isn't aren't they all from the same century? Thon too? No, Thon's twenty fifth, right? Well, Thon's twenty fifth. Uh, Legion's thirty and... first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, let's. I, You've, DC's television, you've clearly gone full comic books. We're not here to stop you. We're not here to even offer suggestions. We're just along for the ride at this point because you had the reverse flash throw his hand through our man's chest in 1942 after admitting to him earlier wiped him out in a different timeline. So, yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> like a timeline where he told him not to come back to this time. Don't go to 1942. Mm-hmm. And Thawne was like, you can't warn them. I Ooh, there's a wrinkle. Thawne needed them to come. Right. Why? That means he needed them to stop them from setting up the nuke. What I feel like it is, is I feel like Thawne doesn't seem too bothered by what has transpired so far. Like, it's all part of the plan. Mm. You know, because he even said you he told him you figured out my plan and I can't have you warn them. But that doesn't mean that what they're doing now is against his against, plan. against his plan. So. Who knows? You know, and remember, he. He took the artifact they took. They got he him. did. So maybe he did need them to come. So they could get the artifact, and maybe he didn't know where that artifact was. Them coming down, getting the artifact, putting in the GSA, a brownstone, and then coming in, him coming in, killing Rex Tyler, and taking it. Maybe that's all part of the plan. Who knows? It's got, I'm, com- I'm, it's got really complicated. Yeah, no, I'm 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 here for it though. I'm like I think I think I mean we we get so excited seeing evil fucking Thawne being like in his full this evil Thawne in his full glory, like not have not losing his speed, not being able to keep his speed. Not pretending to be somebody he's not. This is Thawne just being Thawne. And, uh, yep, I'm here. Love it. Love it. So, all right, anything else you want to say about this before we uh, wrap this up? This is delightfully comic booky, and if they can keep up the pace, I, I, I'm really impressed with what they're trying to do now. I hope they can pull it off. Same here. Same here. All right, folks, that is our recap for Arrow, episode three of season five. I think it was called, oh, what was that called? That was a uh, a matter of trust. And episode two of season two of Legend of Tomorrow, the Justice Society of America. <laughs> you can find the rest of our recaps on um, moviefeelerviews.net or uh, uh, mtrnetwork.net or searching on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Search for Super Tuesday Recap. Also, like we said, uh, we're doing a character corner. We're corner right after this. On uh, the Justice Society of America. So if you want more information on them, uh, just hop over to uh, the Character Corner and uh, listen to us there. So until next time, we are out of here. Peace.